Well, by following this inquiry into natural theology, the inquiry has brought me to a point that could be described as an arid foreboding place where there is a wall. By looking at my place in the universe, I see that my lifespan is a tiny speck in the lifespan of the universe and that the earth even is a tiny speck in the entire universe. And I see that I'm one person among very many billions of people. And if there's no God, if there's no afterlife, it's easy to wonder what good is it all? What could I ever do to affect anything? Were I able to uh, destroy the entire earth? So what? A little speck in an unimaginably large universe, the universe would hardly notice. So, being at this place, should I consider going back? The question is going back to what? Now, I was raised as a Roman Catholic, went to Catholic school, and I was told very in very definite terms what was what and what I needed to do to get into heaven. I needed a Catholic baptism, and I needed to die without any unforgiven mortal sins. Now, this was before in the uh, 60s, 1960s, there was something called Vatican II, and the church kind of loosened its theology a bit. But I went to school before that, and it was very definite. Catholics got into heaven, period, no one else. There's a line, I think it was Thomas Aquinas, who said something like, the Catholic Church was like the Ark. If you were on the Ark, you were saved. If not, you drowned. Later, I had a Jehovah Witness who was a, my music teacher. And I learned, maybe not when I was in high school taking lessons, but eventually I learned that Jehovah Witnesses say that I believe 144,000 of them get to spend eternity with Yahweh in heaven, but the rest get to spend on a wonderful earth, and that evil people simply cease to exist. Later on, I knew a Baptist. Some Baptists believe that Catholics and Mormons are in need of salvation. Even later, I was driving to work, I was listening to a Christian radio station, and the preacher said with very great conviction, if you're not baptized by immersion, you're going to hell. So if I wanted to go back, what would I go back to? These various Christian groups disagree. If I joined the Catholics and that preacher was right, Catholics don't get baptized by immersion, I'm going to hell. If I joined that group, well, the Catholics used to say that if you weren't Catholic, you couldn't get into heaven. Things loosened up a bit. But in the 2007, maybe, the then Pope said, reaffirmed the old traditional doctrine, there's no salvation outside the church, and by which he meant the Catholic Church. Now, there are some niceties about the Catholic Church, except some Protestant groups as having apostolic succession, and some not. I won't get into that. But suppose I wanted to go back. And whatever Christian group I choose, Islam, I believe, says that God is neither begotten, neither begets or, or is begotten. And I believe they say that if you accept Jesus as God, you're, you're in trouble. Let's put it that way. So what group do I go back to? Now, I could just pick one, maybe Catholicism, since that's what I was born into, and I could turn off the higher parts of the rational mind. I could not worry about it. I could just have faith. And that's what some people might say to me, just have faith. Well, I do have faith. I have faith that what seems like nonsense is nonsense. I have faith that if the churches can't decide what you need to do to get into heaven, well, then, then Jesus has failed, hasn't he? I mean, supposedly he came to earth to show us the way of salvation. If I can't figure out the way of salvation and I just have to basically flip a coin and pick some denomination and hope to God I'm right, that's not acceptable. That's not rational. That's not reasonable to believe. But 
a lot of people do that. But if you do that, can you really believe? You know what you've done subconsciously. You know that it just doesn't add up. So can you go back? I can't. I've got to go forward. Or stop here and just say, life is meaningless, it all doesn't matter, when I die, I die, and let's just forget about it and try to have fun while I'm here. I could do that. But I feel that this is, like, again, another kind of faith. I feel that the universe, could it really create beings intelligent enough to realize their ultimate, their ultimate finiteness and ultimate insignificance? And then just let them die and vanish? I don't know. Maybe it could. Reality doesn't have to conform to my wishes and my feelings. But, you know, I feel that a lot of people, subconsciously, who are religious, kind of know that they're just accepting a story. A story that gives them hope and faith and some rules for leading a good life and makes them feel good, gives them comfort and solace and but they kind of know in their hearts, even though they don't admit it to themselves. And I see that, this might seem kind of strange, but if you think about, if you think about what happens with Santa Claus, let me tell you what I mean. Imagine you're five years old. Your parents tell you about Jesus, who watches you, who rewards good, punishes evil. You never see Jesus, but you see his helpers, his ministers, and everybody admits he exists. This is if you're brought up in a traditional Christian home. And you're also told about Santa Claus, who sees you when you're sleeping, sees you when you're awake, knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake, who rewards good and supposedly puts coal in the stockings of bad boys and girls. The parallels are hard to miss, especially because Santa Claus does his thing at Christmas on the birthday of Jesus. So to a five-year-old or a six-year-old, Santa Claus and Jesus might be kind of like cut from the same cloth, brothers almost. There's differences, but they're both supernatural. They both can do special things. They both care if you're bad or good. They both have helpers. You've never seen either of them, but you have to believe. A lot of Christmas stories emphasize belief as a virtue. I believe the Polar Express is one I saw years ago when my son was young. A lot of others. You have to believe. Have faith. Don't think too hard. And then when the child learns that there is no Santa Claus, when the child learns that he or she was naive to believe in Santa Claus, what is that kind of teaching subconsciously about Jesus? That might seem like a stretch, but if people really, if, if I was a member of a congregation that really, really believed that if you're not baptized by immersion, you're going to hell, wouldn't I be telling all my neighbors? Wouldn't I be telling all my friends? I was in Boston once, a visiting. I didn't live there. And I was leaving a restaurant, and I'd asked for directions. And as I was leaving, a waitress said to me, now, you don't want to go this way, but you want to go that way. There was some sort of construction or something where she was warning me, you'll be inconvenienced if you take this path go that way. Yet, I could probably work next to a person for 20 years who believed that if you're not baptized by immersion, you're going to hell. And they would never tell me. Because they'll nod on Sunday when they're in that special church environment, and then they get back to the real world. And in the real world, I think in their heart of hearts, they don't believe that. I don't know. But the fact is, even if I wanted to go back, I can't. My mind won't let me. I can't turn off the higher faculties. I can't go back and say, well, gosh, all your religions teach, if I don't believe I'll go to hell, so I'll just pick one of you, flip a coin. I can't take that seriously. It seems like hell seems like a boogeyman for weak-minded people. That's what it seems like to me. So here I am, and I guess I either have to stay here or go forward. Thanks.